lot of people are wondering what will happen if the Supreme Court decides against um, allowing states which do not have their own health care exchanges uh, to not offer subsidies to people in the uh, Affordable Care Act. Robert Pittenger, Congressman Robert Pittenger joins us right now. Do Republicans have a fallback plan if indeed this does come down? Because I realize that Obamacare is not necessarily popular with Republicans as a whole, but is there a, a, a fallback plan because indeed this isn't offering health care to a lot of people, millions of people across the country? Yes, we do. I mean, I'm on the steering committee of the Republican Study Committee, and uh, we have written a very good plan that puts uh, patients first. Uh, we, uh, it's, it's a plan that opens up the market. It's market driven. It'll be driven by competition yeah. so that the insurance companies can cross state lines. Uh, business will be able to pool together. It'll be portable. You can take it with you. There'll be the, uh, the same tax deduction for an individual that there is for a, for a business. So it has that attraction and incentive yeah. uh, for the individual to make it fair for them. Now, so is there's this, many parts of this that really are going to make it more attractive. Is this a plan that has been around uh, for, it's been around for several years now, the, the proposal, is that correct? Well, we've amended it and we've adapted it. We've looked at the outcomes of the, the Obamacare plan and, and what's happened. And the reality is uh, health care costs uh, have gone up. Uh, you have Blue Cross Blue Shield. Now saying they need a 25% increase. Yeah. You cannot keep your physician as was promised. You can't keep your plan as was promised. And so what we've created is a market-driven plan yeah. that, the, that is owned and operated by that individual. How do you respond to two latest polls, 62% on public policy poll and 55% on a Washington Post ABC News poll, um, who state that uh, if indeed the uh, Supreme Court guts Obamacare, um, that the majority of Americans, that percentage of Americans, would like the Republican-controlled Congress to fix healthcare.gov, the existing Obamacare model, and not implement something else. Well, they don't know what something else will be. Let's show it to them. Yeah. Uh, let them make that determination. You know, you can't reject something that you don't know what it's about. Yeah. And the American people are going to like what they're going to see. Well, the existing plan that you have right now, regardless of its merits on Republicans' uh, eyes, uh, is dead on arrival with many Democrats and particularly with the president. Are any sort of negotiations underway now that would perhaps have a bipartisan uh, appeal? Well, let's present the plan, as I said. Well, this uh, plan has been out there since well, 2013. Uh, so We're going we're gonna to take that individual who has a hard time getting insured and we're going to have a, a pool for them, a risk pool, yeah. that will uh, be $25 billion. We're going to have a pool of $15 billion to do research, to identify cures for the, for the major diseases in this country, incentivize people to go and find these cures. We're going to have litigation yeah. uh, coverage to... But you again, know, you're giving the merits of the plan as it sits right mm -hmm. now. I'm asking, is anything in, in the works with negotiations with Democrats and the president to perhaps come up with a... Fix that well, there's timing overall. and everything. Let's and uh, let's roll out the plan. Yeah. Let's let's give the American people a buy-in to that plan, so they know what it is, and then we'll be able to present that uh, to our colleagues in the Congress. You get the last word, Congressman Pritchett. Always great seeing you. Thanks for Good joining us. Good to see us. you. Thank That's you. That's our end of conversation for today. We'll be right back.